How's it going everyone? Pop-Tart here. Welcome back to the Air Team channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan in 1.5 to 1 scale. The C208B Grand Caravan is a slightly stretched version of the Cessna 208 Caravan, and it's a small utility turboprop aircraft, mostly used for air taxi transportation and cargo. As for the build itself here, credit goes to Air Team member Warald is for the design, and as I mentioned, this is in 1.5 to 1 scale, meaning that every 1 meter in real life is equivalent to 1.5 blocks exactly. If you are building an airport project or something in this scale, this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1.5 to 1 aircraft on the channel. So as you can see here, we've got four different versions we'll be building today. This is the base C208B Grand Caravan. This version here has the optional cargo pod attached to the underside where the base doesn't. The third variant here is the C208B Super Cargo Master. You'll probably be more familiar with this one, as FedEx contracts almost 300 of these aircraft for feeding cargo to its larger hubs. The final variant here is the Caravan Amphibian. It's a caravan on pontoon floats for water landings. There are a lot of these amphibious Cessna caravans, but not too many of the Grand Caravan here. Nevertheless, I'll still be showing you how to build it with all of the other different versions here if you so choose. Anyways, before we get started here, there's just one last thing to mention. As always, this build does make use of our very own custom AeroTeam texture pack. A download link to version 1 of this pack for Minecraft 1.13 can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. Now, as you can probably tell here, I'm personally using the as-of-yet unreleased version 2 of this pack, so this will be different from the pack you're using. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, there are no differences in terms of color or detail from version 1, so everything should be good for you otherwise. If you are stuck using the default texture pack instead of the Aero Team pack, if you're building on console or something, I will do my best to show you how to build this in default as well. Please do keep in mind, though, that I highly recommend using the Aeroteam pack instead if you have the option to do so, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that, let's get going on the tutorial. So before we get started, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. The Cessna Grand Caravan is 20 blocks long, or 21 blocks for the float version, 23 blocks across, and 7 blocks tall for the base Grand Caravan, or 8 blocks tall for the uh, amphibious version. Now as for materials, here in the Aero Team pack we're using the wool block, coupled with the purple stairs and slabs for the smooth and bright wool coloration for the aircraft. In default, you'll probably want to use something like quartz or smooth quartz as an alternative, so just use that instead of wool as you're building. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be referring to these as the wool stairs and slabs, but again, this is the purple material in the Aero Team texture pack. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get started on layer 1. So for layer 1 here, if you are building this on the ground as I am here, for the Cessna Caravan here, you'll be starting two blocks off the ground, with a one block gap on the second block right here. Uh, this will go for all three versions here, the Caravan, the Cargo Pod, or the Super Cargo Master. If you're building the float version though, it is raised a little bit farther off the ground, so you'll be starting on the third block here. That's a two block gap off the ground on the third block level, just like this. Again, that's for the Amphibious Caravan. Since I'm starting here with the Grand Caravan itself, though, I'll be starting on the second block. But if you already know that you're going to be skipping ahead to that, then, uh, yeah, just start there. If you're building this in flight in the air, though, then you don't have to worry about uh, where to start it then, so just start wherever you like. Anyways, now that we have that, for layer 1 here, what we're going to be doing is starting off with a birch trapdoor, actually. And again, this is going to be on the second block up here for the uh, base Grand Caravan version. So we've got a birch trapdoor right here. Now in the Aeroteam pack, this is a uh, solid wool color for the birch trapdoor. In default, just use iron or something like that. Behind this here, we're going to have a block of wool with an upside down wool stair facing backwards, just like this. Off to the left side of the aircraft, we're going to have a birch trapdoor on the top half coming out from that wool block right there, with a wool top slab behind it like this. On the right side here, we actually have the exhaust from the engine. So for this, grab your smooth stone slabs. We've got a smooth stone top slab coming off of that wool block right there, and a smooth stone half slab behind it, just like this. Grab wool top slabs again, we'll be placing seven going back from this upside down stair right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, like this. Box this off to either side now to close all of this off. Then just place one more wool top slab going back from that center block, just like this. And that'll do it for layer one. For layer 2 here, we'll be placing a block of wool on top of that birch trapdoor from the last layer. Up to either side here, we're going to have a wool vertical slab. So for this in the air team pack here, we've got the dead brain coral fan, and this will be placed out to either side of this wool block, just like this. That'll give you these wool vertical slabs to um, round off the nose of the aircraft here. 
If you're in default, uh, maybe use just something like an iron trapdoor closed against it, or maybe a uh, birch fence or something like that, but those are just ideas off the top of my head. This vertical slab solution here does do the job perfectly, so that's why we're using it here. Anyways, now that we've got that figured out, back from this here, we're going to have two more blocks going back, one and two, and close this off to either side. Oh, that's a trapdoor. There we go. So, you got a 2x3 right there. Now back from this here, we're going to be putting in the forward doors. So behind this uh, second block right here on the outside, so we're going to have a quartz full block, just like this, with a stone button out to the side. Now, if you are in default and building the entire aircraft out of quartz, then probably the best way to accent uh, doors like this would be a cobblestone full block like this. But um, quartz is a much smoother and uh, much more realistic um, replication of this than cobblestone, but yeah, that is what you might have to do in default. Anyways, in the air team pack here, we are using quartz for that, so yeah, I'll just put that in like this. Anyways, now that we have that, going back from this now, on the right side only of the aircraft here, we're going to have six blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then a quartz full block behind, just like this, stone button out to the side. On the left side here, it's just five blocks going back. One, two, three, four, and five. And this time, two quartz full blocks going back, just like this, with a stone button on the second block. The uh, door on the left side of the Grand Caravan here is slightly larger than the door on the right, so that's why it's like this. Once we have that, to close off the interior here, we'll be placing ten blocks going back right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, just like this. Should overshoot by two blocks here. Out to either side here, we're going to have an upside down wool stair facing backwards, just like this. And then back from the center wool block right here, just two wool top sides going back, just like this. And that will do it for layer two. For layer 3 here, what we're going to be doing is starting right up here on the nose, on top of this first wool block right there, kind of in the center, we'll be placing a white carpet on top of it, like this. Birch trapdoor going back, with a white carpet out to either side, then a row of three birch trapdoors behind it, just like this, to round off the nose. Now on top of these blocks right here, on top of the uh, quartz full blocks, we'll be placing three nether brick stairs facing forwards, just like this, for the windshield. Next, grab a block of black wool, and back from the center block right here of these three for the windshield, place eight blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This will kind of black out the uh, windows here when we do put them in. So for this, out to either side right here of this last block, we're going to have a wool stair upside down facing forwards, just like this. On the left side here, or that is the right side of the aircraft, I was looking at the left side for myself here. So on the right side of the aircraft, we've got a quartz upside down stair facing forwards to finish off that door right there. Then six wool stairs going forwards from here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. On the left side of the aircraft now, that's two quartz stairs right there to finish off that larger door on the left. And then five wool stairs. One, two, three, four, and five. That'll finish off these windows on the side right here. Going back from this black wool right here, place uh, five blocks going back. One, two, three, four, and five. And a wool top slab back right there to finish off the tail cone. Grab a jungle button now, and where we've got these two uh, blocks of wool exposed on the underside right here, place a jungle button down from the first right there. That's for a detail on the underside of the tail cone. Now in the air team pack again, the jungle button is a wool material like this, which is more accurate to the detail in real life. In default, uh, wood material is going to look a bit strange, so just use uh, stone or something like that instead, but yeah. Again, the wool texture is a much better alternative in the aero team pack. Anyways, now that we have that, that is it for layer 3. Alright, so for layer 4 here, we're just going to be capping off the top of the aircraft right here. For this, grab the birch trapdoors again, and starting on top of this first black wool right here, back from the windshield, we've got two birch trapdoors going back right there. Box this off to either side like this, then bring this four back from the center. One, two, three, and four. Should give you something looking like this. Now on the outer layers here, back from this uh, first explosive block right here, we're going to have a lever. Make sure it's flipped facing backwards just like this. This is for a detail on the top of the aircraft. And then back from this we've just got two more birch trapdoors like this. And that'll kind of finish off of the wing box on the top right here. Then to finish capping all this off here, just place three more uh, carpets going back from each of these trapdoors here. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And same thing in the center right here. One, two, and three. And that'll do it for layer 4. So now that layer 4 is in place, the fuselage of the Cessna Grand Caravan is done. 
The next thing we'll be doing here is moving onto the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. Usually I do these separate, but since this is such a small aircraft, I might as well do them all at once here. For the vertical stabilizer first, uh, back from this carpet right here, the last one that we placed in layer 4, we've got two wool slabs going back right here, then three blocks of wool, just like this. That should meet up right there with that last top slab of the previous layer. Now on top of this here, we've got two more blocks going up, just like this. Forwards from the bottom block right here, we'll be grabbing our vertical slabs yet again, and that will go right here. Again, that's the dead brain coral fan forwards from this uh, bottom block right there. In defaults, uh, maybe use something like a wool stair for this one, but the sloping is going to be a bit weird, so this uh, sheer angle of the vertical slab is a much better alternative for that. Anyways, that will finish off the front of the tail right here. We'll be leaving this top block empty, it's just going to stay as it is. For the back right here to round off the uh, uh, rear curve here, uh, going back from these bottom two blocks right here, again leaving the top block empty, we're just going to have two birch trapdoors closed against the back, just like this. Should give you a shape looking like that. Now you'll see we have these three blocks going up right here. Out to the side of the second one right here, the middle one, we'll be placing a jundle button on the sides, just like this. And that will finish off the vertical stabilizer. So for the horizontal stabilizers now, you'll see that we started this in line with layer 4 right here. Now, uh, down a layer right here, this is where we have that uh, wool top slab and the long row of wool right here for the tail cone. Out to the side of this wool top slab here at the back of that layer, we'll be placing three quartz top slabs out to the side. One, two, and three. Same thing on the other side right here. One, two, and three. Then three nether brick slabs across the front right here to finish off the leading edge detailing for the horizontal stabilizers. And that will do it for the stabilizers of the Cessna Grand Caravan. So now that we have that, we'll be next putting in the wings of the Cessna Grand Caravan. So now it is important to note that the wings here are asymmetrical only slightly because of the weather radar on the right wing right here. I'll first be building the left wing and then I might as well build the right wing. Usually I only build the left and then have you mirror it over yourselves, but since this is such a small aircraft I'm just gonna go ahead and do it all on camera today. Anyways, for the left wing here, we'll be starting from this row of windows on the second window back right here. So from this long row of uh, wool upside down stairs right here. So on the second stair back right here, we've got five nether brick top slabs going out to the side right here. One, two, three, four, and five. It's blocked like this for the uh, leading edge detailing on the wing. Now behind this here, we'll have five wool top slabs out to the side right here. One, two, three, four, and five. Then grab your quartz slabs, and we have five quartz slabs behind us right here. One, two, three, four, and five. This is for the flap detailing on the trailing edge of the wing. From this last wool top slab right here, we'll have a quartz top slab right there, just like this. Then come up a layer right here, and we've got three quartz half slabs going out in line with this right here. One, two, and three, just like this. With a wool top slab, or half slab rather, out to the side, like so. Now, uh, going forwards from this very uh, innermost quartz slab right here, we'll have a smooth stone slab right there, with three nether brick half slabs going out to the side, one, two, and three, just like this. Forwards from that smooth stone slab right there, there'll be an end rod going forwards from that. Then going in towards the center to finish off the leading edge right here, just a single nether brick half slab in line with this uh, second layer up of the wing right here, so it should give you a curve looking like this. So that's everything for the wing itself. Now to add in the strut here, what we'll be doing is uh, coming to this fourth netherbrick slab of these five right here. So we've got one, two, three, and on the fourth here, we'll actually be knocking this one out. Now in its place here, we've somehow got to get a netherbrick top slab mixed with a wool half slab on the bottom layer. Now the solution for this in the hero team pack here is using the stripped oak log, just like this. So this will have a uh, wool texture here on the bottom half, and a black wool texture on the top, which is exactly what we need for the strut here connecting. In default or something, without that option, you might just have to use a black wool full block or something like that for this, but this is how we're doing it here in the Aero Team pack. Anyways, to finish off the strut here, connect this in with the fuselage, come in and towards the center right here, down a layer, we've got a wool top slab right there, and again, wool half slab, and a wool top slab right there in line with layer one of the fuselage, just like that. That will give you the left wing. For the right wing here, we'll be starting it out just the same as we did on the left. So, on the second wool uh, upside down stair right here, five nether brick top slabs out to the side. One, two, three, four, and five. Five wool top slabs now. One, two, three, four, five. 
and five quartz top slabs. One, two, three, four, and five, just like this. Quartz top slab out to the side from that uh, wool top slab right there. Then come up a layer right here, one, two, and three going out to the side with a wool top slab on the wing tip. Next we've got one, two, and three nether brick half slabs going in from the wing tip right there with a smooth stone slab and an end rod coming off of it just like this. Now instead of just putting a nether brick slab right there to finish off the leading edge detailing as we did on the left wing, we're actually going to be putting in the weather radar here. So for this, we've got a wool slab coming in from that there with a second wool slab going forwards. Underneath these two right here, we're going to have a birch trapdoor, just like this, to finish off the weather radar and kind of give this little dome shape here on the front of the wing. Anyways, with that, we'll just be doing the same thing as we did before to put in the wing strut. So, fourth nether brick half slab out right here, or top slab rather. Knock that out, replace it with a uh, stripped oak log right here. Come in and down an angle right here, wool top slab. Wool half slab there, and a wool top slab to connect up with layer one of the fuselage. And that is everything for the wings. Alright, so the last thing we'll be doing here for the Cessna Grand Caravan is putting in the landed gear. Now, unlike the other aircraft you may be used to on the channel, the landing gear of the Cessna Caravan are not retractable. These are a fixed tricycle configuration, so they don't retract into the fuselage when in flight. So you'll be building these, uh, the landing gear here regardless of whether the aircraft is on the ground or in flight. So just keep that in mind. It's also important to note that if you are planning on converting this into the amphibious Grand Caravan, then you won't be adding in the landing gear here. We'll be adding in the uh, pontoons separately, as it's a different design from the landing gear itself. We'll be starting here with the nose gear. For this, what we're going to have here is a player skull underneath this uh, wool block right here. This is the perfect size for the nose wheel in this scale, and you may have seen this trick used on some of the uh, more medium-sized wheels in the 1-to-1 -one -one scale series. At the aero team here, the player skull we use is this uh, very wheel-looking head right here. It's the perfect head for <laughs> wheels like this. Now, unfortunately, this is just the skull that we use. I have no idea how we got it or anything like that, so I can't give you a command to give this to yourself or anything. But if you have come across any player skull that looks like this, feel free to use it for the nose wheel. Now, if you're building this in survival or something without commands or uh, just don't have access to a skull like that, uh, another option you can use is a uh, wither skeleton skull like this. Uh, probably face it backwards like this so you don't get the texture showing from the front, but that'll be more of kind of like a black texture like this, which is more of a um, tired looking appearance, which will still be good for the shape and color of the nose wheel. But this player still here that we use is a much more wheel looking design for the rim detailing and all that, so that is what we're using here. Anyway, so now that we've got that figured out, I can throw this away for now. The next thing we'll be doing here is putting in the uh, nose wheel struts. So for this, we're actually going to be using an armor stand, and we're going to have to dig down through the nose here to get at this. So we'll be knocking out this very first birch trapdoor right there, and the two blocks of wool going down from it like this. Now that we have access to that uh, space right here, on top of that uh, uh, wheel right there, we'll be placing an armor stand facing forwards, kind of as uh, perfectly aligned as you can with the uh, legs not kind of sticking out to the side or anything. And we'll be arming this with iron leggings and iron boots, just like this, to uh, flush off the uh, leg region here with a more uh, gray conf uh, color configuration for the nose gear struts. Anyways, now that we have that, we have to replace all the blocks that we just broke. Now, uh, quite obviously, we can't just place those blocks over the um, armor stand like this, since it is an entity. And that's the quartz block. I don't know why I grabbed that. We'll need wool here. So yeah, we can't place blocks in this space right here, since the armor stand is there. So what we're going to have to do here is place a block of wool right there, coming out from that birch trapdoor. Then grab a piston and place this above right here, facing down, like so. Power this in any way you can, just like this. That'll kind of push this down right there. And we need to place this one further, just like this. And you can remove that piston setup. That'll push those two blocks into place without interfering with the armor stand at all, or shifting it or anything like that. Now that we have that, we can just place the birch trapdoor on top to finish off the nose once more. And that will give you the nose gear. Now for the main landed gear here, what we're going to be doing is, back from where this strut right here connects in with the fuselage, we'll be placing a uh, wool stair here facing out to the side for the support leg of the gear. 
Below this here, we're going to have a black wool full block, like so, with a stone button out to the side, just like this. And that is literally all there is to it for the main gear. So, just the same thing on the other side here. Blocked back from the strut, we've got a wool stair out to the side, just like this. Black wool full block underneath, and stone button out to the side for the rims. And that is everything for the landing gear. Alright, so the very last thing we've got here is the engine of the Cessna 208. So, basically all of the engine is encased in the nose right here. There's nothing visible on the exterior, of course. So all that we'll be doing here is putting in the propeller for this. First, we're going to have a smooth stone full block going forwards from that block of wool right there in the nose, with a button on the front there. Next, to put in the three propellers of this Pratt & Whitney Canada PT6A engine, we're first going to have a netherbrick stair here, facing out to the side on the left side of the aircraft, just like this. So it'll be coming down and at an angle to the right when looking down the aircraft like so. Now, on the right side of the aircraft here, we're going to have a netherbrick upside-down stair facing in towards the center this time, giving you something looking just like this. Now, for the third and final propeller, this is going to be a vertical slab coming up from the uh, smooth stone right here. So again, this will be using the same coral as the wool vertical slabs that we've already used. For this one, it'll be the dead fire coral fan that'll give you the black wool vertical slab. For this here, we're going to have a barrier coming off to the right, just like this, up at an angle with the dead fire coral fan on the inside seam of it, just like this, and that will finish off that third propeller. And once you have that, the base Cessna 208B Grand Caravan is done. So, now that we've got the base aircraft done here, the next thing we'll be doing is building the other three modifications of it. If you are building just the uh, base Cessna 208B Grand Caravan here without the cargo pod or anything, then you're basically done with this tutorial, and you can just skip right on ahead to the end of the video, I guess. But if you are building any of the other three variants here, we'll be tackling that next. The first one we're going to be doing here is, of course, adding in the cargo pod on the underside of the aircraft. But if you'd just like to skip ahead and build the float plane instead, a timestamp for that will be in the description below. Anyways, with that, let's get going on the cargo pod. Alright, so as I mentioned, we'll be building the cargo pod on the underside next. This is just a modification if you'd like to have that uh, cargo pod on the underside of the passenger version here. But this is also a feature here on the Super Cargo Master. So if you're building that instead of the passenger version, then this is something you'll want to add in as well before you get going on that. So to add in this cargo pod here, we'll be coming to the underside, where we have this uh, wool stair facing backwards right here. This first wool top slab here, we'll be knocking that out, as well as all of the wool top slabs going back from it. Just like this, kind of back in a row. Back from this uh, upside down wool stair here, we're going to have eight quartz full blocks going back now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, just like this, with a quartz top slab going back from it, just like this, to kind of slip off the back. Now, starting on the underside here, going back, uh, let's see, first place a temporary block right there behind the nose wheel. Then back from this right here, we're going to be placing seven birch trapdoors going back on the underside of this. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, like so. And that will slope off nicely here at the rear. And once you have that, the cargo pod is installed. For the third variant here, we'll be converting the Grand Caravan with the cargo pod installed into the C208B Super Cargo Master. For this, what we're going to be doing is just basically sealing off all of the windows here. The first thing we're going to be doing is knocking out this uh, stone button right here and this quartz full block right there, the door on the left side of the aircraft. And we're going to be moving this one block back here to kind of fit in in the side. So replace this wolf stair right there with a quartz upside down stair facing forwards, like so, with a block of quartz below it. That'll be for the left door. And the same thing on the other side here. So just move all of that back right there and fill in that block with the wool right there. Next, going back right here, all four of these wool windows on the left side are going to get filled in with the uh, wool full block, like so. And the five windows on the right side are going to get filled in with wool as well, just like this. Now we'll have to replace these details that we broke on the top here, so uh, grab your levers. Again, that's two levers flipped facing backwards just like this. And then we also broke a white carpet right there on the right side. So, now that we have that, uh, what we'll be doing next is sealing in these other two windows here. So that quartz upside down stair is going to get knocked out and replaced with quartz. Same thing with that wool upside down stair. Replace that with wool. And make sure to replace the carpet on top, just like this. Same thing here for the large door on the left side. So, the two 
uh, quartz upside down stairs there, place that with quartz, and the wool upside down stair, fill that in with a wool full block, and the three white carpet on top to fill that in there. And once you have that, that is the Super Targo Master done. Alright, so for the final variant here, we've got the Amphibious Grand Caravan. As I mentioned at the start, if you're building this on the ground here, this should be three blocks up as opposed to two, so it's raised a bit higher off the ground like this. The first thing we'll be doing here is putting in the uh, struts connecting the fuselage to the pontoons. So, uh, let's see, on the left side of the aircraft right here, where we have this uh, top slab section right here, knock out the first two wool top slabs right there. We've got a upside down wool stair facing backwards right there, and an upside down stair facing forwards into it just like this. Come uh, down and out at an angle right here, and we instead have a wool stair, a normal stair this time, facing backwards, then a normal stair facing forwards just like this. There we go. Lazy way of putting it in. So you should get a kind of offset square shape like this, kind of out at an angle. And connect this on top right here with two white carpet for the uh, support strut in between these two struts right here. We'll be doing kind of the same thing on the right side of the aircraft here. As you'll see, the first block is taken up by the exhaust pipe from the uh, pt 6 a engine there. So right here we're just going to have a upside down wall stair facing forwards this time. We're going to skip out this stair facing backwards. Then come down and out at an angle right there. Normal stair facing forwards and a normal stair facing backwards into it with two white carpet on top. That'll give you that first strut right there. Now for the uh, second strut set right here, where we've got the wing strut connecting into the fuselage. Uh, let's see, back right here, this next block back from it, this wall top slab right there, knock that out and the block going back from it like this. We've got a uh, an upside down wall stair facing in towards the center right there, and an upside down wall stair facing backwards to corner it off like this. Next, come out right here at an angle. We've got a uh, just two normal stairs facing out to the side like this, and that'll give this uh, kind of thicker support strut in the center right here. Same thing on the other side here, so block back from that wing strut, knock that out, and the block back from it right there. Wall stair facing in towards the center, and wall stair facing backwards. And just two normal wall stairs facing out to the side like so. Next, right here on these uh, this very last wall top slab in this outer layer, knock that out. Uh, wool upside down stair facing backwards, and a wool stair facing forwards into it just like this. Then come out at an angle again, this is the same design as the uh, forward strut right there. Two wool stairs facing into each other, and a white carpet on top. And I, I believe I called this a support strut uh, with the forward one right here. It's a ladder facing into the doors, but yeah. So you've just got that design looking like this. Now this design, unlike at the front there, is not going to repeat on the right side of the aircraft. So you just have the one right here on the right. This should look something like this once all is said and done. To connect up these struts now, what we're going to do is grab wool slabs. Now on the forward block of these, for these ladders that is, we've got uh, three wool half slabs across the front uh, between these forwardmost blocks right there. Not on the uh, back side, but on the front. And connecting up these two wool stairs right there as well. Three wool slabs across the, uh, connecting the forward two stairs right there. Just like this. And for the final ladder right here, since there's no ladder on the other side, there's going to be no strut connecting across. So you'll just uh, leave it at that. Now for the pontoons themselves here, starting from this forward ladder right here on the left, we'll be taking wool slabs. We've got two wool slabs going forwards from that uh, wool stair right there. Block of wool underneath, upside down stair facing forwards, and a wool top slab off of it, like so. Block of wool underneath that forward block there, upside down stair, wool top slab, two slabs across the top, just like this. Now on this middle strut here, this thicker support strut, down from the forward block right here, the same one we had that strut connecting across, we've got a black wool block right there with a jungle button out to the side for the uh, larger landing wheels of the pontoon skids. So again, as I mentioned when we were building uh, where was it? I think it was on the underside of the tail cone here. The jungle button in the air team pack is a wool texture for the kind of whiter rims of these wheels. In default, just use stone instead. Anyways, now that we've got that, just connect this up with the forward section of the pontoon there with three blocks of wool and two wool slabs across the top to uh, fill in that area. Three blocks of wool and two wool slabs just like this. Going back from these larger wheels now, we have three wool top slabs. So, one, two, and three. Then three birch trapdoors going back, one, two, and three. Or again, iron trapdoors in default. Same thing over here on the left side, one, two, and three wool top slabs, one, two, and three birch trapdoors. 
finish off the top of these pontoons now with uh, just a slab on top of every empty space right there. So on the left side, it's just filling in the space between the, the uh, ladders there. And on the right side, that sits slabs across. Now at the back of these floats here, we have a stabilizer fin here. So for this, it's just going to be a birch trapdoor coming back from that slab right there, closed in towards the center, just like this. Same thing here on the other side. So uh, block space between, birch trapdoor closed against the inside. That'll give you that fin right there at the back of the float. Coming to the front of the floats now once more, what we're going to be doing here is putting in the smaller stabilizer gear here at the front of the pontoons. So for this, what we're going to have here is a nether brick half slab coming forwards from that wool slab right there. Same thing on the other side. Let's grab a player stall, the same one that we used up at the front with the uh, landing gear for the base Cessna caravan. Now, of course, if you are building exclusively the float version here and just went straight from the Grand Caravan to this, you won't have built the landing gear from the base Grand Caravan, so you won't be familiar with this player stall here. So I should probably explain it a little bit. So this is the player stall we use here at the Aero team for uh, smaller landing gear such as this, especially on our smaller one-to-one -one aircraft. Now unfortunately, since this is just a stall that we've had here on the server, I can't really link you to any special commands to give it to yourself or anything. But if you do come across a player stall that looks something like this, you know, wheel-shaped, then uh, please do feel free to use that instead for this. Otherwise, if you can't find an adequate wheel skull like this, or if you're playing on survival or something and don't have access to commands, something like a wither skull is a good alternative to it, since it is a kind of a more black texture for uh, tire design like this. Anyways, now that we have that figured out, what we're going to be doing here is just taking whatever skull that you're using, and uh, coming back to the stabilizer gear here, we're going to be skipping this block underneath the nether brick half slab that we placed, then a block forwards from this right here, that's where that player stall is going to go for the gear. Now, under that slab, what we're going to have here is a lever uh, on the underside face of it like this, flipped facing forward, so it's facing right into that skull like this. In reality, this is a very small wheel that's kind of on an extendable leg like this, so it sticks out and keeps the uh, aircraft from tipping on the floats. Same thing on the other side here, so skip a block, wheel forwards, and down into the ground here, that's not how that command works, there we go. Lever, flip facing forwards, facing into the gear just like that. So once you have that, the pontoon floats for the Grand Caravan Amphibian are done. Now I still have one more thing to do here, and that is to put in the special vertical stabilizers here on the tips of the horizontal stabilizers for the Caravan Amphibian. It's almost a tri-tail design kind of thing, so uh, for this what we're going to be doing here is grabbing wool stairs. Now see here where we've got these three quartz slabs coming out for the horizontal stabilizers here? This third one right here, we're going to knock that out, the outermost one, and replace it with a upside down wool stair facing forwards just like this for kind of the smaller tip of the uh, fin coming down like this. On top of it now, we're going to place a normal wool stair facing forwards. So you've got kind of the smaller fin at the bottom there and then the bulk of the fin at the top. And round this off here at the back with a birch trap door closed against it like so. Same thing on the other side here, so knock out that third quartz uh, top slab, upside down wall stair facing forwards, upside down, or normal stair rather, on top facing forwards, and a birch trap door closed against the back, like so. And that will finish off the horizontal stabilizers. So once we have that, the aircraft itself for the Grand Caravan Amphibian is done. Now there is one last thing that we can do for this. So, uh, quite obviously these landing gear here are to allow the amphibious version to still land on, well, the land in addition to performing water operations. Now, interestingly enough, unlike the tricycle gear for the Grand Caravan, these landing gear here for the amphibious version are retractable. So when the aircraft is performing water operations, these would be retracted into the floats to allow the aircraft to land on water without the landing gear getting in the way. So I'm just gonna show you quickly here uh, how to build the landing gear retracted for water operations. So if you're building this, uh, like, landed in a river or something, or on a approach or whatever, just in general, if you're using it for water operations, these landed gear would probably be retracted. So, what we're going to be doing for this, uh, let's start with the main landed gear here. This one's a bit interesting here. So this larger wheel right here just kind of folds into the uh, pontoon itself, and it's kind of hidden away by the sides. So all that we'll be doing for this one is just kind of knocking out that wheel and the buttons on the sides, and replacing it with an upside-down wool stair facing backwards. So that large wheel would kind of be uh, tucked away inside that little curve there in the underside of this pontoon. And the same thing is just going to happen on the other side here. So, knock out that wheel, replace it with an upside-down wheel stair facing backwards, just like that. 
Now for the stabilizer gear here at the front, these smaller ones, basically all that happens is the wheel itself is retracted along the uh, extension leg here, so it's still visible from the outside. For this, what we'll be doing is grabbing that player skull there and knocking it out. We'll place that with a temporary block there for now, knock out that extension leg as well, and basically what we'll be doing here in this space is placing that uh, wheel skull on the back face of that temporary block right there. So the wheel itself is still kind of out at an angle there along that leg, but it's just retracted um, a little ways against it. So it is sticking out a bit from the pontoon float itself, and this should give you a design looking like this. Same thing on the other side here. So knock it out, temporary block, and place the player stole against it just like that. And that'll give you the retracted landing gear. Now, of course, if you are building this on the land as I am here, you would be leaving the uh, landing gear extended for that, but hopefully you're able to find that useful all the same for water operations or whatever. Anyways, with that, that is all there is to it for the Grand Caravan Amphibian. And all four variants of the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan are done. So, congratulations on completing the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan. Thank you so much for choosing an air team design. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of whatever project you're using this for. Do feel free to use this in any kind of project you like, given that you of course provide proper credit to the air team for these designs. So, if you have built this aircraft, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. Tag us on Twitter, or share it with us on our Discord server. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing to the air team channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Anyways, that is just about it. So, thank you all for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one.